On Tech News Today, a new company wants to track every video you watch, and they'll pay you for the privilege. Plus, we'll tell you about the craziest virtual reality gadget ever, and a new car seat doubles as a massage therapist. It's all coming up next on Tech News Today. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Wednesday, September 23rd, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Prosper. Prosper is a peer to peer lending marketplace that connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Visa gift card when you get a loan. And by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay, period. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash TNT. Tech News Today is the show where we talk about the tech news with the journalists who report it. My name is Mike Elgin. Kevin Tofel is off today, and it's too bad, too, because today is a very, very special day. On this day in 1962, the Jetsons cartoon premiered on the, in the world's television. Uh, let's take a look at some of the technologies that the Jetsons predicted well and didn't predict so well uh, looking into the future. LCD TVs, Your including 3D ones. <laughs> on 3D TV at half past Jane, his wife, is watching an exercise program on the flat screen 3D with your modern, LCD modern TV. Tone program of the air. Now chins up, I mean chin up, index fingers out. Ready for your push button finger exercise? This is literally the greatest cartoon that ever existed. Okay, vending machines and food robots. Uh, they didn't sorry, get that Mom. quite as well. Hey, maybe I should uh, they imagined pushed. a Star hey, Trek school, huh? kind of a scenario where oh, no, you don't. a built in like machine would fabricate the, the food on demand. The usual that didn't out. really happen. We got all kinds of great kitchen gadgets. Cereal? that were not envisioned in silent. the 60s, but Better make it silent. we didn't get the and sort of bacon. Bacon. And one soft boiled egg. push a button one soft and egg. get the food thing. It comes right out of the middle of the table. Very Thank handy. That's so All right, let's see how they did in the bathroom. So George Jetson is taking his home conve <laughs> conveyor belt, moving sidewalk into the bathroom. Okay, and he brushes okay. his teeth, and these toothbrushes, two toothbrushes, come out of the wall and brush his teeth. In fact, we have... Electric toothbrushes now that do pretty much most of the toothbrushing work for us. All right, con conveyor belts and sliding doors, not so much. I guess we have them in airports now. And uh, we do have sliding, automatically opening sliding doors. We don't have these things in our homes, though. Because the boss is a penny pinching old crab, that's why. Someday I'm going to give that door a shot right in its electric eye. Pow! All right, so here's uh, video 3G. Uh, basically, Mother. this is Skype. <laughs> Except on the Jetsons, it always works. I was just going to call you. You were? Well, and and it's too bad, too, that we don't have TVs that have the really funky mother. Jetsons antennas it's just on it. That that would be great. Gets me down. Well, it's really none of my business, dear. All right. So I'll give you some Well, advice. Jetsons, thank you yes, for that, Hanna-Barbera. Uh, it's basically the Flintstones set in the future. Great cartoon. I, I basically used to love that show when I was a little kid. And uh, I'm still always sort of comparing reality to the Jetsons cartoon. Anyway, 1962. Wow. Facebook is doubling down on its instant articles offering, and some publishing partners are definitely on board, according to Recode's Peter Kafka. Peter, Peter joins us now to talk about it. Welcome to the show, Peter. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Now, before we get into the news, can you remind us about what instant article is exactly and how it works? So instant articles, just like it sounds, it, it's a way for Facebook uh, to, it, first of all, the, technically Facebook's hosting an article from a publisher like the New York Times or BuzzFeed and I think now Vox Media. And the idea on Facebook's end is, hey, you press a button, this stuff loads very quickly. It doesn't take eight seconds to load. It, sh it shows up immediately uh, on, your, on your page, on your, on your iPhone app. Um, so that's on the Facebook's end. On the publisher's end, the, 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 what's, what's a big deal about this is they're giving their content to Facebook, Facebook serving, serving up the article directly, and also um, serving up the ads. And so there's a lot of, a lot of hand-wringing about, well, is this giving Facebook too much power and authority over sort of the publishing world? 
And the Washington Post, as you reported, is going all in. Can you talk about the Washington Post's uh, announcement? Or it's not an announcement. You sure. broke the story. Sure. The, the, well, yeah, it's, it's an announcement. Uh, the, the, the Post, and this is a symbolic move that's important for Facebook, and, and I think the Post as well, is saying everyone else up until now, there's been about nine publishers that have done this, and they said, well, this is, a, this is an experiment. Uh, the first day the New York Times did this, they published one post. They didn't publish another for a couple of weeks. Um, everyone's been sort of treating this gingerly in the post, saying we're just going to do all of our articles everywhere. Um, the post has done this in other places, as I pointed out in my article. They, they publish all their stuff through Flipboard as well, but no one cares because Flipboard's not a very big platform. Yeah, uh, I mean, certainly not symbolically important. And again, the, the 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 question that everyone's thinking about is, well, if the post is going to publish its entire output on Facebook for free. Isn't this essentially sort of ceding control of their digital property to Facebook? Uh, Post basically sort of shrugs and says, we don't care. Um, we want to distribute our stuff as much as possible. And then obviously we think that people will see our stuff on, on Facebook and eventually come see ourselves, see our stuff on our platforms as well. But frankly, we don't care. We want to use Facebook as the big distribution engine it is. Now, obviously, Facebook has a lot of eyeballs. Uh, if, if it's two per user that you can imagine, you know, I guess 2.8 billion eyeballs. Uh, and uh, Good lots of body, lots of bodies. But do people yeah. go to Facebook to read the Washington Post? No, and 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 I mean, I guess you could now if you really wanted to sort of do that hack. Um, but I mean, people go to Facebook for a lot of reasons, and I think what the Washington Post is thinking is we want to get in front of some of those people who aren't necessarily going to the Post and saying, "Look, this is an article that's interesting. We published it." This is what all the publishers say: we sort of want to use Facebook's reach to sell our stuff just like anybody else who advertises something on Facebook. I think they're just sort of looking at this as advertising for their product. And, uh, you know, you have to wonder whether or not uh, Jeff Bezos has his hand in this. Uh, he, of course, personally owns the Washington Post. Uh, do we have any knowledge about how how much he's involved in these kinds of decisions? Uh, no. I mean, I don't know that he would care about this one in particular. Um, everything I've heard of the post is Bezos says, go as fast as you can. If there's anything digitally related, I want you to do as much of it as possible. Uh, and they sort of have an unlimited briefing to sort of do whatever they want digitally, as long as they do it quickly. So this sort of falls into that category. It sounds like to me, the post folks said this was a relatively simple thing for them to do technically, which of course the Facebook guys like to hear as well. And I imagine that he was involved in uh, offering the Washington Post for free to, I believe, prime subscribers for six months, uh, if I recall. Right. The, the Facebook guys put this in this context. They say, look, we're doing this on Amazon Prime and pushing it out through Kindle, and, and we're going to do this lots of different places. We want as many people to see our stuff as possible. It's not so much that's particular to Facebook. It's just one avenue we're going to use. Now, you reported a couple of weeks ago that Google and Twitter are collaborating on a sort of instant articles killer. Uh, which do you think is more compelling to publishers? I mean, on the one hand, Instant Articles is pretty slick. It, it enables the, uh, the the articles to appear in their native format or even better with live video and stuff instantly. It looks great with the, with the publisher's own uh, design elements and so on. On the other hand, the Google and Twitter version doesn't really require any work on the part of the publishers. Which of these do you personally think is more compelling to publishers? The Facebooks can argue, by the way, that their thing doesn't require any work either. They've got okay. a long technical blog post that went up yesterday. Look, n none of these platforms are saying we need exclusive content, and that includes Snapchat, that includes Apple. And until someone does, I think all the publishers are going to use all of these uh, these solutions. I mean, this was a big deal when it sort of first came to light a year ago as a, as a concept. And I think most publishers now have sort of moved past it. They said, look, these are distribution platforms. We've got to use them. It's great. There's a lot of them because it means they'll all compete for our stuff. And one of them can't have any more power than the other. The truth is they're not all created equally. Facebook's enormously important to all the publishers because it has so much reach. Um, Google's a big deal as well, but people aren't going to Google for as much news. And, and Twitter is interesting for news junkies. But again, Twitter's much smaller than Facebook. So it's a pretty tough decision to not work with Facebook. Um, I think the Wall Street Journal may be the most prominent publisher that hasn't agreed to do the, the Facebook instant yet. Um, but I assume they'll come on board sooner than later. I'm sure you're right. Peter Kafka writes at Recode.net. And you can follow him on Twitter at P. Kafka. Peter, thank you for joining us on Tech News today. Thank you. More news coming right up. First, I want to talk about Prosper. What is Prosper? Prosper is the modern way to borrow money. You know, this is a very, very hot category, this type of lending. And Prosper pioneered it <clears throat> years ago. And they're, they're by far the best company in this space. You can borrow up to $35,000 in as few as five days and use the money for just about anything you want to use it for. You can pay off high-rate credit cards. You can fix up the house. You can 
create a new business, you can do a green loan. One of my favorites is a green loan. You have an existing business or a house or something like that, and you want to be more environmentally friendly. You can go to Prosper. You can add this information, just give it basic information about yourself, check the rates, uh, indicate what the loan is for, and then people will invest in you. People who are also concerned about the environment will go and invest in your green loan. It's a great system, no collateral required, and just based purely on basis of the quality of the loan, it's a great loan. They, the payments are fixed. They deduct it right out of your account. There's no penalty for paying early. There's, it's just great in every single way. Don't rack up more debt on your credit cards. Pay them off with Prosper. Now and for a limited time, Prosper is offering Twit viewers and listeners a $50 Visa gift card with your low interest loan. You can get up to $35,000 in your account in as few as five days and a $50 Visa gift card. Just go to prosper.com slash twit for this special offer, which is just for you, the Twit viewers and listeners. A new app called Video Pulse from Symphony Advanced Media wants to monitor all the videos you watch and it wants that so bad, they're willing to pay you to allow it. Jason Abruzzi's is a reporter for Mashable and joins us now. Hey, Jason, how you doing? Great. How are you guys doing? We're doing great, thank you. Now, how does this app work exactly? So basically, you install it on your phone, and it just works in the background. So you can just turn it on, and you'll never see it. And then uh, what it's doing the entire time is it's kind of passively listening, kind of like Shazam does, um, except it's on all the time. And what it's listening for is, you know, what videos you're watching. Um, so let's say that, you know, you had it on, you turned on, a, you know, MTV, it would be able to recognize from the television, the same way Shazam does of music and television that, uh, Hey, this guy's, this guy's, this guy or girl's watching TV and they're watching this particular show. Uh, it can, you know, recognize, uh, Oh, they saw this type of advertisement. Um, it's also going to be tracking, uh, your, you know, your web browsing on the smartphone that it's on in addition to your location. And how much do they pay? So it's five to eleven dollars. Um, they weren't entirely clear on you know who gets the five, who gets seven, who gets eleven. I would guess it's based on like how desirable you are to marketers as a demographic. And that's per per month. Per month, yes. Per month, okay. And uh, why do they want to know this? I mean, what do they do with the data that they collect? So, I mean, if you can think about, like, what, how rich that data is compared to kind of this other data that we try to piece together from, you know, surveys or, or Nielsen ratings, you know, what this is basically going to do is give uh, this company a very, very rich, very accurate idea of what people are watching, how much they're watching it, how they're watching it, when they're watching it, where they're watching it, um, what, you know, possibly even what they're doing while they're watching it. If you're on Twitter while you're watching your MTV show, you know, they can tell, like, oh, yeah, this person was tweeting or this person was shopping for a product they just saw. That kind of data, uh, you know, for for marketers and even for, for media companies, um, you know, NBC and Viacom are two companies that are already involved in this. That's, that's really valuable data these days because everybody's trying to figure out the best way to figure out how people are watching video, uh, particularly in this kind of OTT, on-demand, you know, you know, asymmetrical, everybody's doing something different time. The big problem with this that jumps out at me is that you can imagine two different kinds of users. One would be somebody who super value, values their time and wouldn't offer up this kind of data for any amount of money. On the other end of the spectrum, you have people who will do anything for a few dollars and they don't care if their privacy is violated. And what you're going to get, you're going to get data, which is no doubt going to be presented as what the public is doing. But in fact, it's going to be this subset of people who are willing to give up all their privacy for a few dollars. Uh, given, given that, uh, that flaw, I think, in this system, how many users do they have so far? So they claim to have around 15,000 users. They're looking to get to 50 to 65,000-ish total that they think will be able to give them a good cross-section of, of all the groups they need. Um, they try to alleviate that issue of, of you know, weeding out um, or, or not going too hard on a particular group or, or getting too caught up into people who are willing to just do this for money by recruiting. You can't actually just go download this app, sign up. You're going to have to get actively recruited and they'll go pick you out because they think that, hey, you're a good person. You're representative of uh, a group that we want to learn more about. Um, that's kind of how these things have worked for years. That's, that's how Nielsen and, and, and all kind of the other uh, uh, media data uh, companies have worked. They try very hard to use statistical analysis and, and limit their exposure to any particular group or to people who are just, you know, in it for a few bucks. Hmm. Very interesting. Now, do you think this is the future of user behavior tracking? Is is paying people the way that these companies are going to get around resistance based on privacy? 
So that's a great question. And what I found particularly compelling about this app was the idea that, you know, we're kind of already being tracked all the time. Uh, I think we've seen multiple times where, you know, Facebook's tracking us, other people are tracking us using a variety of different means. Um, it's been floated out there like, hey, we, this value, this data is obviously very valuable. There's a reason everybody's getting tracked. Why not just like be honest with the consumer and say like, listen, you're giving us, you know, valuable data on yourself. Here's something in return. Uh, uh, people have suggested that as, as a way to kind of create paywalls online. Like, for instance, if, if I'm a media company, I might say like, hey, uh, you know, let us know, know a little bit about you and, you know, you get all our content for free. It's, it's a very, very soft paywall. Um, we, that's actually a relatively old model. That's kind of how uh, sweepstakes used to work. You know, you enter the sweepstakes because you give uh, a company a bunch of information that they can sell to marketers and then you get a chance at $65,000 and a guy showing up your house with a big check. Yeah, it's it's absolutely incredible. And, you know, one of the benefits that the uh, advertising companies could give us for harvesting all our user data, I think, is just some relevant advertising. I mean, I don't think they're very good at it, g given the amount of data that they collect. Well, that's just my opinion. Uh, you can track Jason Abruzzi's at Mashable.com, and you can follow him on Twitter at Jason Abruzzi's. Jason, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Have a good one. A new report from Comscore says that both the time spent by Americans on websites via their phones and the time spent using mobile apps are growing. The report also found that eight of the 10 most used of mobile apps were either Facebook or Google apps. The number one most used app is the main Facebook app, not surprisingly, which got 126 million unique visitors in the United States alone in June. Comscore said about 62% of all the time spent online is through a mobile app, but the number of people using mobile websites is about two and a half times larger than the number of people using mobile apps. So what that means is that Websites get a lot more people, but users spend a lot more time inside their apps. And I think that makes a lot of sense because, of course, if you wanted some random information, you'll go to your browser on your phone, you'll search for that information, and it'll take you to some random app. So that's a, that's a, you're a person using this different app. But if you're going to also go do social networking, you're going to open up the Facebook app and you're going to spend a ton of time there. So this, of course, makes a lot of sense. And, of course, mobile is just uh, really taking over in terms of, where people spend their time. Well, the so-called safe harbor framework, which exists to make sure data transfers from the EU to the U.S. are legal under U European data privacy laws, is in trouble. EU Court of Justice Advocate General Ives Bott said today that the mass indiscriminate surveillance carried out by the NSA invalidates safe harbor. An organization called Digital Europe says that about 4,500 companies use the safe harbor scheme to transfer data to the U.S., in product update news, Uber is testing a new kind of carpooling service called Uber Commute. The service will be tested first in a single city in China. For passengers, Uber Commute will be very similar to Uber Pool, which is an option where people going to the same direction can share an Uber and split the cost. But for drivers, Uber Commute is very different. It offers the opportunity to make money by giving other people rides to their same destination. In other words, they're not full-time drivers. They're not even part-time drivers. Uber commute drivers only drive to and from their own regular jobs. More news coming right up. But first, one of our sponsors today is Braintree. And of course, if you're a mobile app developer, if you've got a website and you sell stuff, you have to use Braintree. You simply have to. It's the only way to go. It's code for easy online payments. It's super easy for your users. It's so easy that you'll, you'll basically solve the problem of mobile card abandonment where people come to your site or use your app and they start to buy something, start to pay for your service. And then they leave because it's too complicated, it takes too long, it's too confusing. Whatever the reason, this happens. It's a pandemic out there, but Braintree will solve it. Braintree is the cure for that pandemic because it's so, so easy to use. Companies like Uber, Airbnb, Hotel Tonight, Living Social, and Muntree are so awesome when it comes to the payment process because Braintree makes it super, super simple. But it's not only easy to use for your customers. It's super easy to use for you as well. You can use it in over 40 countries through 130 currencies. And they've got libraries for six server-side languages and mobile SDKs for iOS and Android. If you want any help, their tech support is super awesome, and they will help you through anything and answer any question you might have. And with instant approval, you can start accepting payments literally in minutes. Super fast payout, better cash flow. Braintree is the way to go. Braintree gives you a full stack payment solution, support for all payment types, and you can start accepting PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, credit cards, so much more, all with a single integration across all platforms with superior fraud protection, customer service, 
and fast payouts. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash TNT. And we thank Braintree for their support of Tech News Today, and I thank Braintree for the super easy payments. I just get in and out of the Uber, and it is nothing. there's nothing to it. Thanks to Braintree. We've got some big numbers. We have a big list of big numbers today. All right, let's start with the first one. It's 5.6 million. That's how many people got their fingerprint data stolen in the recent hack of the Office of Personnel Management, according to a new statement released today. The previous reported number was 1.1 million. The victims were current and former federal employees, as well as people who had applied for background checks. The hack was believed to originate in China and possibly perpetrated by hackers working for the Chinese military. And this, of course, is one of the problems with biometric security, like fingerprints. Once it's stolen, you know, you can't change it because it's your fingerprints. And so that's uh, something very different from a stolen password, for example. Well, another big number for you, 24. That's a percentage drop in Swiss watch exports in August, resulting from the smart watch industry for low-end watches priced in the same range as high-end smart watches, between 200 and 500 Swiss francs, which is roughly 200 to 500 U.S. dollars. So in other words, those high-end smartwatches like the uh, fancy uh, Samsung watches and the Apple Watch are having a toll on the actual watch industry in Switzerland. All right, another big number, 13. That's the percentage decline for Swiss watch exports priced in the low-end smartwatch range of 200 Swiss francs and below. Uh, one more watch, big number, 1.2. That's the percentage decline of Swiss watch exports overall for the month of August. So the entire industry has taken a hit. And this is a big, big deal to Switzerland because something like 10% of their exports are in the watch racket. And smartwatches are having an effect. All right, another big number, 400 million. That's how many users Instagram now has, according to, who else? Instagram. The company claims huge increase of users in Brazil, Japan, and Indonesia. And news you can lose, the whole point of virtual reality is to simulate Reality. Sometimes reality involves G-forces, so the best G-force creator we've ever seen is the Cable Robot Simulator developed at the Max Planck Institute for Biological Cybernetics. The simulator involves a kind of cage with a seat in it where the user sits, strapped in with a seatbelt and shoulder straps. The VR goggles are wireless, so you don't want to get tangled up in the wires while being flung around in this room. And the cage is then flung around with these really uh, high-fidelity computer-controlled cables at really, really high speeds. It's pretty amazing. The cable robot simulator is a prototype, but could be used in, uh, and developed for use in arcades or like training simulators, something like that. This is really great. I would love to try this. I mean, this is just crazy. Really, really crazy. What other crazy news you can lose? A French car supplier called Foresia uh, has created a car seat that gives you a massage when you get stressed out. It's called the Active Wellness Seat, and the device uses a biometric sensing system built into the seat that can monitor breathing and heart rate and tell when you either get drowsy or feel stress. It then responds by giving you a massage and directing airflow through the seat in a way that either wakes you up or mellows you out. The seat was developed in partnership with three American organizations, the Spine Research Institute at Ohio State University, a company called Hoana Medial, and NASA. Wow. Another news you can lose item. In the wake of a damaging gender discrimination lawsuit by former Reddit CEO Ellen Powell, the Silicon Valley venture firm Kleiner Perkins Caulfield & Byers is boosting diversity in part by hiring Ariel Zuckerberg, the 26-year-old youngest sister of Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. And it's true. People who are the siblings of Silicon Valley billionaire royalty are, in fact, a minority. Our TNT fan of the day is Matt Gebrun in Sydney, Australia, who posted this little bit of IT porn on Twitter. And there we are. Very cool. Very nice picture. Love to see it. Show us how you watch or listen to TNT. Just record a video or take a picture of yourself or your setup and post it on Instagram, Google+, Twitter, or Facebook. And use the hashtag HowIWatchTNT so we can find it. Let us know what's on your mind. Send email to TNT at twit.tv or call us at 260-TNT-SHOW. That's 260-868-7469. You can leave a message. Nobody's going to answer the phone, but you can leave a message and we might play it on the air. And of course, we can't uh, show all of the uh, email we get or play all of the recordings. We, we, um, we try to bring in the, the things that are 
contributing to the current events that we're talking about. So if you have something to say about today's show, make sure you call or send us email today. You can subscribe to Tech News Today on TuneIn. You can even watch the live version on TuneIn or listen to it on TuneIn. And you can change, uh, you can choose some other way to subscribe at twit.tv slash TNT. If you'd like to help us grow our audience, here's how you can do it. Just post a link to twit.tv slash TNT on the social media site of your choice. Tag three friends and recommend that they subscribe. You can subscribe to our subreddit at technewstoday.reddit.com. And you can follow me on Google Plus at Plus Mike Elgin. Also, don't miss our other new show, Tech News Tonight, at 4 p.m. Pacific every single weeknight. And that is the Tech News Today. This show was produced by Jason Cleanthus and edited by Anthony Nielsen. My name is Mike Elgin. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.